Deciding to train for a marathon is going to cause a seismic shift in your lifestyle. It will become your personality, it's going to annoy your friends every time you talk about it, and it will take up quite a lot of your free time. And for many people, like myself, finding the time to train can be quite hard with things like work, social events, and family life all getting in the way. So today I'm going to share just how I fit marathon training into my life whilst also balancing all the other challenges life throws at me. And let's go! <laughs> Have I got something cool to show you? Now, as you all know, I practically live in my Nike Invincible 3s. In fact, my current pair has got something stupid like 500 miles on them. So I thought I'd treat myself to a new pair. <laughs> Look at these. Now they are a little bit dirty and that is fully because I ran 17 miles in them on Sunday and 6 miles in them yesterday. Part of me was a little bit worried that they were going to feel poo compared to my old pair, but of course they didn't disappoint. And these should easily last me for the remainder of my marathon training and even a few months after that, so expect to see these in a lot of videos very soon. Anyway. Tangent over, in today's video I want to talk about marathon training and how an average person, like myself, can fit it into their daily lives. Because it's not easy. So something that made processing marathon training so much easier for me and is also something I'd really urge you to try is to plan your week. And I'm putting this right at the start of the video because this is single-handedly one of the best things I have ever implemented into my life. Now, I personally try to do my plans on either a Sunday evening or first thing Monday morning. Planning at these times means I have a solid base for the rest of my week's plans to grow off of. Now, don't get me wrong it will take a little bit of time for you to figure out just how much detail you want your plans to go into and just how meticulously you want to plan your week out. The main things I always plan are the days I'm going to be out running as well as the actual times I'm going to be out of the door doing the run. I also try to plan my gym sessions along with the time that I'm going to get these done as well. And then the only other thing that I make sure I plan is any other big commitments I have coming up within that week. This could be social events that I've committed to going to, extra things going on at work, or even being in a different location for part of the week. Now I choose to plan my week in a physical journal as this means I actually have to think about my plans before I write them down. This doesn't mean you have to do the same thing, you can 100% do this on your phone or your computer and there are definitely apps out there that will make this process so much easier. I personally just find it too easy to type without thinking and if you make a mistake Mistake, you can just delete it, whereas in a journal, you don't really want to be doing that. Having your week's plans laid out in front of you will hopefully make you realise you actually have more time to go out on that extra run than you originally thought. I'm glad I got that one out there before the attention spans of the 21st century cave and click on a new video. And I'm not biased or anything, but you should definitely stick around because there's more really good tips coming up. The next tip is going to be quite short and sweet, but make sure you prioritise the right things. There are so many videos on the internet that I see telling you that you need to run six times a week, go to the gym three times a week, stretch every day, drink more water, eat healthier, cut out beer and alcohol, the list goes on. Priority number one is the running. Because let's be fair, you're not going to run a marathon if you don't practice the running part. I personally aim to run four to five times a week, but even for me this can be a push at times, so I always make sure that I prioritise my long run on a weekend and then my recovery runs at the start of the week. This way I'm still working on increasing my volume and my time on feet, which are going to play a much bigger role in the actual marathon than missing an interval session on a Wednesday. Priority number two is strength and conditioning. Running high volumes within marathon training is going to put so much added stress 
onto your muscles and joints. And the last thing you want to do is end up injured. So as an absolute must, please make sure you're doing an adequate warm up and cool down before every single run without fail. And then if it's possible, try to fit in one to two at home strength and mobility sessions just to make sure that your muscles are getting that added TLC that they need. And priority zero, which is even more important than the actual running, is look after yourself and your mental health. Trust me, you do not have to hibernate away from your friends and family just because you're training for a marathon. I can absolutely promise you that you have time to train for a marathon and still have a social life. If you've stuck to your plan absolutely religiously for the last three to six weeks and haven't missed a single session, then skipping one track workout to go out for some drinks after work is not going to be the end of the world. As I've said before, most of us are professional athletes and running isn't our job. So we're allowed a break every once in a while. And even if you're a professional, have a break every once in a while. <laughs> The next tip is another good one, and it's to do with your days off, also known as the weekend. But just before I proceed, if you're enjoying the video, please consider leaving a like, as it genuinely means so much more to me than you might think. Anyway, utilize your weekends. Most people who work a nine to five job have the weekends off, which means you have two whole days to use to your full advantage. Now, straight off the bat, one of these days should be used as your long run day. And to add to that, try and do your long run in the morning. It makes complete logical sense to do your long run on the weekend as you have the most available free time. And by doing it in the morning, you still have the rest of the day to do all your other plans. And then use that other weekend day to catch up on anything you've missed during the week and try and recover properly. This could be a mobility session, a stretching routine, or more than likely, sleep. And in the wise words of Forrest Gump, that's all I have to say about that. And my final piece of advice for this video is to just embrace the chaos. Right at the start of this video, I said that marathon training will cause a massive shift in your lifestyle. And I wasn't lying. I went from casually running three times a week to consistently running four to five times a week, as well as going to the gym twice on top of that. And trust me, it wasn't all plain sailing, but I learned what worked for me and I learned to just embrace the changes that were going on in my lifestyle. So with that being said, try to stick to your plan as consistently as you possibly can. But understand that you will miss training days and on the flip side, you will have to sacrifice certain things to be able to achieve your goals. But it'll all be worth it when you cross that finish line and you finally get the medal you've been dreaming of. And really, there's no such thing as a bad day. There's just days where you succeed and then there's days where you learn. Oh, every time. I genuinely hope that you found one of the tips in today's video useful. I have used every single tip in this video throughout my time training for a marathon and they've all helped in countless different ways. So please let me know in the comments which ones you found useful and which ones you're going to start implementing into your own lives. In other news, I'm quite excited to let you know that I'm going to be running the Leicester 10K in a few weeks time on Sunday the 3rd of March. It's going to be a good tune up race to see just how my fitness has progressed over the last couple of months and also a perfect opportunity for me to test my race day kit. That means the alpha flies. I've also got a pretty exciting video to go alongside that so keep your eyes peeled in the next few weeks. That is all I've got for you today. If you've enjoyed the video please consider leaving a like as it genuinely means so much more to me than you might initially think. And if you want to stay up to date going into the final weeks of my Manchester Marathon prep then you should probably go down and hit that subscribe button whilst you're there. As always have an absolutely smashing rest of your day and I'll catch you all next Saturday at 6pm. No bad days.